go back up to the stage to introduce our next band. Well, our next artist. Um, big thanks again to Andrew Bryant. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for playing Dixie is Dead. That's also one of my favorite songs. Um, big Hawk, uh, it, like I said, she is my little bird, and I am her big hawk in the night sky. Um, up next, we have one of the double O favorites, Culla, out of Milwaukee. Hey, he's been around for a long time. He, he, he's either a slave to debt or a slave to sweat. It depends who you ask. But y'all, thank you for coming out. We are about to jam out to some more music. Um, without further ado, the great Culla. What's happening, Jackson? Came all the way down from Milwaukee for this evening. This first song I'm gonna sing is called, I Cast You to See My Darling Baby. It's a story of the, of Taliesin, an Irish folktale. Taliesin was a blind man, and Caridwin, the goddess of the forest, had sex with a mortal man, and had a really ugly baby that she was not happy with, thought that her son could be a little bit more handsome, need a little bit of magic, so she decided to concoct a potion, a one-time use potion for everlasting life and beauty. So she hired Taliesin, who was a blind man in the town, hired him to stir the potion for 40 days and 40 nights. And about day 32, 33, somewhere around there, Taliesin started to fall asleep a little bit. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've only stirred potions for at least only about five days straight. After that, you start to get a little sleepy. So day 35, 36, what was it? What did I just say? 22, 32, somewhere around there. I started to fall asleep, and the potion started to boil over. And he saw a bubble there in the potion, and it popped, and three drops landed on its thumb, and put it in his mouth instinctually. And those are the three drops of this little symbol on my guitar in my head here. It's called Awen, the magic potion of divine poetic inspiration. And so this song is all about the fact that Caridwin was very upset with Taliesin after he became a god and used the potion that she worked so hard to do for her ugly son. So Taliesin wasn't stupid, he knew that Caridwin was going to be pissed. And sure enough, she was, so... So Taliesin turned into a salmon, jumped in the water, swam away. Caridwin turned into an otter, swam after him. Taliesin turned into a sparrow, tried to fly away. Caridwin turned it into a hawk, chased after him. And then Taliesin flew over a field of barley, turned into a single grain, and hid amongst the field. And Caridwin turned into a red-breasted hen, found him, swallowed him, and birthed him right back out again. Because all the ladies know here, that's how that works. And, and she looked at Taliesin, now her newborn son, and couldn't help but realize this was not an ugly son. This was quite a handsome young boy. But she was still pissed, and she didn't have it in her to kill him. So instead, she just wrapped him in her leather bag and chucked him off the cliff into the ocean for someone else to deal with. And that's just about the first couple paragraphs of the story of Taliesin. He goes on to accomplish many great deeds. And this song is all about the feeling Caridwin when she takes her baby, wraps it in a bag, and decides to part ways. On the edge of the ocean
On the edge of the ocean, she cries. On the edge of the ocean, she sings. On the edge of the ocean, she cries. Forget devotion. I cast you to sea, my darling. Darling, baby, Wrapped him in a bag of leather. She held him high with a tear in her eye. The gods will have mercy. I cast it to. My darling, darling, baby, Into a stormy sea, she wiped her eyes and said goodbye. Everyone get up for Rhino the Beard in the OO show, everybody. Yeah. 11 years strong. All right, this next song is called A Place I Know. And 
This is a song all about trying to figure out where you belong. And being in that place when you realize that maybe the people that you're around and associating with don't have your long-term best interests at heart. And witnessing that and realizing the folly in that. There's a place I know There's some people there That I know are evil But I just don't care And there's a feeling in me That I can't control And it's a type of sorrow That'll hurt my soul And I can be my own Type of lover man And I can go on Until I understand I feel the thunder clap I feel the wind and rain It's a rip in space It's my cold heart shame Well, doctor, doctor Please cure what's ailing me Please give me a prescription Make my heart free Whoa 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah There's a revolution mm -hmm. And there's an execution mm -hmm. There's a resistance There's a feeling Rising up Through my bones My bones My I know where the wind don't blow. There's a place I know where you don't want to go. There's a place I know where the wind don't blow. There's a place I know where you don't want to go. There's a place I know where the wind don't blow. There's a place I know where you don't want to go. There's a place I know where the evil show. In the light of day I hear the sun's coming back I see the moon is off its track The stars in heavens The story levens The plot keeps thickening But my love is quickening In the sand Don't you understand? There's a whole lot of trouble more. I see a hurricane, I see the wind and rain. It's a shallow figure, it's my cold heart shame. Well, doctor, doctor, please cure what's ailing me. Please give me a prescription, make my heart free. Whoa, whoa. an execution mm -hmm. there's a resistance there's a feeling rising up through my bones my
There's a place I know where the wind don't blow. There's a place I know where you don't want to go. There's a place I know where the wind don't blow. There's a place I know where you don't want to go. There's a place I know where the evil shows in the light of day. In the light of day. All right, very much. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, this next song I'm going to sing is called The Pouring Rain. Or sometimes in my accent, the way I say it, some people think it's the porn rain. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. I don't know if it's rain made out of porn or porn made out of rain. Either way, it sounds messy. That's the wrong key. No, it's the pouring rain. song about perseverance. When we all feel like we're trapped or maybe drowning. Let's see that little glimmer of hope ahead. Some of you might know, my, I come from a musical family. My mother was one of 17 children. And they were in a family band in the Midwest and they toured around in a big band. My grandfather was a gypsy in the middle of Wisconsin. And he would tell me stories about how he'd sing for his supper and try to hustle and get by. But along with that, they learned the sacred act of music and passing on the stories from generation to generation. And when I think about songs like this, where I wrote where it's really a, a vision a vision about the future vision about the current, vision about the past, any of those things can help you move along and keep on keeping on. Walking alone in the pouring rain. to talk to no one to call my name I'm wasting away and my heart is heavy I feel like crumbling I feel my life slip slowly by Drowning in 
my own sorrow. No one's around to see me die. But I say, hey, how long is it going to rain for? Tomorrow's probably going to bring sunshine. The rain is cold and I need to find my home. But where is home? It seems I've taken the wrong road. The lights ahead are dimming. They sure ain't growing bright. But I've gone this far and I know that this ain't right. Say, hey, how long is it going to rain for? Tomorrow's probably going to bring sunshine. Keep on walking. Keep on keeping on. Keep on thinking about that bed I'm gone Bed I'm going to sleep on Through the rain Through the darkness Through the sadness Through the pain But one thought remains true thought of you thank you very much All right, there we go. Let's do how are you guys feeling out there this song is called my dignity I think this might have been one of the first songs I ever wrote. Well, I was wholesome at one time. But then these voices started talking in my mind. Hurt the ones you love the most. Cursing spit on your mother's ghost. Cause these voices scream so piercingly. Hey! I had no armor on my, my dignity. Well, 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 listen. All these voices had me second guessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, 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 listen. All these voices had me 
keep second guessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been lonesome for some time Because these voices started acting quite unkind While wallowing and suffering I somehow realized these voices come from within Now my voice is screaming piercingly hey! I had my armor back on my dignity Well, 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 well listen all these voices had me second guessing Hallelujah Hallelujah. Well, 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 listen. All these voices had me second guessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to play a couple songs on the banjo. The banjo. How you guys? How you guys doing out there? Fantastic. They say there's only four banjos in tune in the world at one time. And two of them are owned by the same guy. This song is called Hurricane. It's the first song I ever wrote on the banjo. Oh, 
Why, oh, why am I stuck between between the eye? And the flow I got no will But I can go In the storm I was born As a new man I was born, brought to the edge of darkness. All I saw was light, and I held. Take me. I gotta get a hard case for this thing. This thing shifts so much, these banjos. Yeah, right. Alright, this next song is called White Crow Flies. This song was from a dream that I had. Flooding dream. What's that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a very memorable dream. It's actually, I realized that it's the oldest dream ever written. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Did you know that was a dream? Someone might know it as Noah's Flood is a similar story. Big old flood. It was a big old flood and me and my kin realized there was a flood and I was just a little baby. And we hightailed it up to the mountains as fast as we could as the flooding came. We lived up in the mountains my whole life. I remember going to mountain grade school, mountain high school, digging into the mountains, going fishing, climbing wasn't much else to do. But I remember being very little and just watching the seas in their tumultuousness, in their turmoil, in the dark rap of the waves. And that feeling that I had when I was just gazing off into the ocean that had just destroyed all of what I know of humanity and civilization. And that feeling that I had is what inspired this song. Actually, no, that's the song I'm gonna play next. But this song, this song is an extension of that. 
So when the flood has subsided, I remember I had a bag of rubies that we got from mining in the mountains, you know. That's what we do for fun when we were kids. And I remember finally when there was a swampland, when he had green after 40 years of all this, I took my bag of rubies, went out into the field, started planting them into the ground. This is all in my dream. And I remember coming back the next day and seeing that all those rubies had grown into red marigold bushes. And on the marigold bushes, the fruit of the flower was more magic rubies. And what I saw was a little bit surprising. What I saw was a whole flock of white crows gathering those rubies and bringing them to their nests. So I followed one, see what was happening. One white crow brought it to his nest, gave it to the little baby, and the baby grew incredibly fast, incredibly strong within minutes. But this is just a little baby, man. It's like giving a little baby an automatic rifle or something, or a rocket launcher, or, or a nuclear code, or something. They're just not ready for it. So this baby, not understanding what to do with its power, lashed out, destroyed the nest, killed its parents. All by accident. So this song is the feeling I had when I watched that. Down by the river where the rubies grow, high up in the sky in the marigold, stolen by the crows as white as snow, to give to the baby for radiant glow. Not one day later when the baby could speak He tore apart his nest with the quick technique Struck by the strength of his own sharp beak Bound to the sound of his mother's shriek Shriek Now the days go by and the white crow flies Days from the gaze of his mother's eyes Cutting through the stalks of the old wild rye The rubies on his feathers grew to ramify Ramify Shaken by the shimmer and taken by the shine The white crow flows with the light divine Struck by the magic of the oldest kind Headed far away across the borderline 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 oh, oh, oh. Oh, This is why I need you guys' help If you can help me for just a second I want to recreate this dream, and I just remember feeling and seeing all the crows calling. So if you guys can call with me just for a second. Ah! Ah! Come on, keep calling! Ah! 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 Thank you very much, everybody. play some more guitar. Thanks for calling. It's for a good cause. I'm glad you guys could throw caution to the wind for that one.
Now, of course, I need to change the tune. Everything Rhino said about supporting musicians was 100% true. 100% true. Stream, one stream is about one, is about three hundredths of a dollar. Even just buying a CD is like thousands of streams. Just for some perspective. Uh, this next song is called The Forgotten Song, which, ah, uh, what was it about? Oh, I forgot. No, just kidding. I know what it's about. That's the joke. It's... And I have it on vinyl back there. If you get like what you hear, I got some vinyl back there of this album and my 15th album called One Half that was on my 30th birthday last year. And you'll see Rhino's name as the executive producer for both of those. So everyone get up for a Rhino for supporting that. People like him really make the music go around in the world. Literally. This song is about a relationship that I had. I wrote this song right in the middle of it. And I remember when it was all done, I was looking at the song and I was realizing, I was like, wow, well, this is a beautiful song. I'm really happy about it, but I don't relate. I don't understand. What is this? What is this trying to tell me? What is this? This must be about someone else. It was all about uh, a man that was delusional about a relationship between him and his wife and his woman. And maybe they didn't see eye to eye on what the heck was going on. Oh, have you forgotten? Ah, but we did say. And the new sun was pale blue. Have you forgotten how the fair winds blow? How we were taught to find solace in woe. Have you forgotten me, love? Have you mistaken my heart and it's breaking for the fair winds blowing and the pale blue sun?
forgotten A time out at sea The waves must have shook you And your memory to remind you don't forget that perfect day on our boat and out at sea with the fair winds blowing in the pale blue sun I just got two more, if that's all right, two more. Does that work? Okay. Is that 50? Okay. Well, we got some great music coming out. Everyone get up for Andrew, who just played before. That, I mean, I've heard some of his music online, but I know that's the first time hearing that voice. I wish I had a voice like that. I can't go that low. I was never at a bass. I'm trying to. Because most people are like, oh, uh, can go very low. So, yeah, more cigarettes. I never was a cigarette guy, just the Mexican kind. <laughs> that means weed, man. No, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not legal in many states. But it's legal in many more. Come pretty soon here. All right. Also, we got John Worthy coming up on here next. This is a really fantastic evening. Thank you all for being here. You guys are the reason that this can even be fun for any of us, <laughs> is that you're all here. Because Rhino put out a lot of work into this. So that dream I was talking about, the crows, this is the dream, this is the song. I've had recurring flood dreams since I was very little. This thing called sleep paralysis. I don't know if you got anyone here had sleep paralysis before? All right. At first it was quite terrifying, but then after a while I realized, just like when you were a kid and you see monsters in the closet or under the bed or any of those types of things, and monsters in the dark, you start to realize that it is all just pigment of your imagination and what you see in the darkness is what comes out at you. They say that 
It's not about the light driving away the dark. It's about us making the darkness conscious. It's about bringing to life the darkness itself. In the darkness. <laughs> I think I developed the sleep paralysis and all that stuff when I was very little. My, my older brother had a stroke at birth and I shared a room with him for about 10 years where he became epileptic from his stroke and would wake up in the middle of the night screaming bloody murder, drop to the ground, shaking, screaming. It happened for they had these things called grand mall seizures where it would last hours. Eventually, one time he was 14, doctors went and did and they took out half his brain, just about almost a hemispherectomy. They said that when they opened up his skull, a big waft of burning flesh smell came onto them. That's what epilepsy does. It just burns right through the neurons. So I think I developed this way of sleeping and dreaming to cope with the fact that there was a screaming brother of mine <laughs> right next to me in bed. Dine with their mind and in time read their soul For a bottomless heaven is a topless hole All the loving you see It comes from me Washing the tide with your blood Where at last is the fire When will we rid of this flood?
Sitting alone at the top of a hill Gazing around to see what I take there Drying your eyes with the salt water tears Trying to stop this teardrop that appears All the loving you see It comes from me Deluge fire Boiling the ocean with cheer Empty the basin of water Now we can live without fear Fire Boiling the ocean with cheer Empty the basin of water Now we can live without fear Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, this last song. It's called Lucifer. Lucifer the light bearer, yeah, or the light bringer. Which I have on vinyl. Which is my preferred method of consuming music. Like I said, I think one vinyl purchase might be like 10,000 streams or 5,000 streams. Maybe. We're going to count it in streams. When I was in Nashville, I saw all these roaches. What are those things? Is everyone here from Mississippi? Everyone here? Who's, who's from non-Mississippi? Wow. People from Mississippi are more loud than the people from now. What is that? I'm from a cold place. I, th I think it was like low of 27 this week up in, up in Milwaukee. I wanna thank everybody for coming out this evening again. Supporting the OO show, supporting original music, supporting the sharing economy. I think it, what is it, Ryan, is it the 20th anniversary of Creative Commons? And this thing, this year is also the 28th year, so it only took nine years to make a show about it. <laughs> And in that spirit, I want to, well, I want to ask one last question before I start telling you a little bit about this song. Who here is a fan of Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. Reason I ask is because, you know, those platforms like Facebook and Instagram and all those types of things, they try and convince artists and everyone that those are the places to 
where you're going to connect with your audience. And it's true, you know, you can, there's a lot of people there, they say feed them where they eat, you know, go where they are. But at any moment, they could take you off, they can ban you, they can mute you. Actually, I've been muted on my own streams playing my own music. No joke. No joke. I've gotten strikes. I think I posted a, I, I posted some meme about Jeffrey Epstein and suicide, like some, when that whole stuff was going down and everyone was making those memes and then eight months later I get a strike. And it's like, what? Eight months later? But anyway, the reason why I bring that up is because I got an email list back there. And if you want to stay in, uh, in touch with all the things that I'm doing, all the albums and all the tours and all the different uh, things around Creative Commons and those types of things when it comes to music business and all those things, just sign up. You can get a free sticker. Just put your, put your email down and grab a sticker. I much appreciate that. Still one of the best ways to support your local businesses and entrepreneurs and artists. Hell yeah. All right, well, now that I got that out of the way, we got uh, this song called Lucifer the Light Bearer. And this is a newer song that I wrote all about uh, the inspiration from the Gospel of Judas and the Dead Sea Scrolls and their uh, interpretations of the early Christian Neoplatonist and Gnostics versions of Genesis stories. I'm kind of into all that stuff. My grandparents were sacred music composers, and, but they didn't even know about all these old scriptures that had just been found. And the Gospel of Judas is quite an interesting tale. In the Gospel of Judas, I don't know who here is familiar with the story of Jesus and all that type of stuff. I figure maybe someone has a basic understanding. So people know that Judas was the one that betrayed him. The one that brought him to die. And fulfilled the covenant, which was magic prophecy between God and the Israelites. But Jesus brought Judas out back in the garden, the Last Supper, and said, Judas, you're the only one I can trust to betray me. All these other people, I can't trust them. They're going to go back. They're going to get, they're going to puss out, man. They're not going to do it. But you, now you can understand. You can see me. And he said in this, in the gospel of Judas, he said, your name will be slandered and feared for millennia. People will hate that name, Judas. So I thought that was quite a twist. So there's a little bit of that, in the, but this song is mainly inspired by Lucifer, which in Hebrew means the light bearer. And there's a lot of traditions where, just like I said, making the darkness conscious. You can't have that consciousness without the darkness. So Lucifer is that light in the darkness. So there was, let's see, at the beginning cosmos. Humans weren't created yet. It was just the angels and the archangels and the principalities and all those forms in the hierarchy of beings, the beginning of the universe. And angels aren't too much different than we are. And so Lucifer was an archangel, so he was pretty hot shit. He was pretty hot shit. He had a big old sword, fancy armor, and he was standing on a cloud, leaning up against the sword like the archangel he is. And he looked off into the distance, contemplated the universe, and perhaps started to think, how did this all get here? And he saw off in the distance, he saw a trumble, uh, he saw a rumbling. And he saw all this light. And he started to see all this light coming through the clouds off in the distance. And he thought, maybe this 
is the creator. So he calls out, he says, God, is that you? My creator, is that you? And what he heard in response was quite confusing to him. It was quite baffling to him. Actually, they call that the bafflement. What he heard in response was not this almighty voice booming down, yes, I am God. What he heard in response was the soft, tender voice of a small child saying, yeah, it's me. What's up, dude? And the Lucifer was quite shocked. Thought to himself, my God is a baby. Surely he is not fit to rule this universe. Surely he does not have a hold on all these things. And thought maybe I, quite strong archangel, could take better care of this cosmos. And as soon as he thought of that, as soon as he understood that he might be the one in charge, that he might know better, that's when all the wrath of all the stars in the sky and all the sound in the universe struck Lucifer down on his cloud to his knees and God cast him down. So that's the story of Lucifer and his fall. So Lucifer isn't necessarily Satan or the devil or any of these things. Of course, there are some interpretations of that, but in this story, He's just that feeling in all of us that maybe we know a little bit better about how the universe should work. And the fact that when we think we know that, that's when we will fall. Here I come, here I go, off along the dusty road to hell. To hell! To hell! Join my table for more wine. What's mine is yours, but what's yours is certainly mine. It's mine, all mine. All your land and all your time and your precious little child is mine. It's mine. Well, I know it's a crying shame, and it's me you have to blame, and for sin, cherish fear my name. My darkness clings to everything you're hiding in your life. What do you say? I'll bring the day, the dawn, the dawn, the dawn has come, and so I'm falling from a new. Life you lose so if you want someone to pray to may I oblige me the people call me Lucifer but you gotta understand I'm a light bearer bringing through your nightmare so you deem what's Right and fair I'm just the messenger Of the fire from the light 
My name is Color. We're gonna give it up for Andrew, Rhino, and for the Eco Shed. We got John Worthy and the Benz coming up next. And if you like what you hear, I got some merchandise back there. I'll be back there if you're interested. Or just sign up for the email list. Everyone have a good night. Yes, big thanks to Color. Remember, support, support, support people. Go out and sign up for his email list. Buy his records, buy all the music, and just do all the things, because that's what it's about. And, and, and you know, Kella, thank you so much. It was awesome. I, I love that song, Lucifer the Lightbringer. That is easily one of my favorite songs of yours, and, and now I'm going to have it. And that's going to be the one I want to clip, and I'm going to play all the time, because I love the long intro to that. That was just awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Um, yes. So up next, we have John Worthy in the bins. Um, we're getting everything ready. I have the John. Uh, the hamster dance is ready. The hamster dance is ready. All right, hold on. So, yes. Did you did you not know what the hamster dance is? Have you never seen the movie Caddyshack? Okay, so I, I'm old. There's a movie from the 80s or 70s. With Chevy Chase, Dan, no, Dan Aykroyd's not in it. I can't remember else. But there's a hamster, Bill, Bill Murray. Those gophers, you got to kill the gophers. But if I kill the gophers, won't I go to jail? But there's a little hamster that does this beautiful dance. That's the hamster dance. I do the hamster dance. So, um, Kala, where do they need to go to support you other than the back right there? Kala Music or Kala.com. Yeah, if you guys want to Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or any of those handles, it's at, or Twitter, it's at Color Music, or go to Color.com, and it's all there. Everything. All right. and, and, I, and I just want to say, I think one of the coolest things, and you got to realize, this man has been making music for over half his life. So when you look back there, there's an album that's two faces of him, and it's because it's his 15th album that he released at 30 years old. So at that point in time, he had been making music for half his life. And I do want to let you know that tomorrow we're going to put a color sticker on my Jeep. I, I have a thing about putting stickers on anything. I just collect stickers. But my Jeep is King Jebediah, and we're going to officially christen it. I'm down. Hell yeah. The Falcon Messiah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So up next, we got John coming up. He's about to get ready. Um, other than that... 